hey guys what's up welcome to the second part of my two-part video on how i actually was able to figure out the john lewis envelope clutch i mean how i was sort of able to figure it out so this is the main part which is actually me making the purse itself if you haven't seen the first part i advise you go check it out because all the information you're going to need on the patterns and everything you need to know about this purse is going to be in the first part so if you haven't seen that one click this link and go and watch that one then you can come back to this one afterwards so this um one i actually used um yeah this is rose gold too now yeah it's like rose gold um synthetic leather it's really nice so i was going for something simple that is why i now had to like counter it with a very shiny um leather so it doesn't look too basic but i wanted something rose gold it's like my new favorite type of gold oh yeah matches my jewelry all right guys let's make this purse if you have any questions you can leave it in the comment section and i will answer you as soon as possible thanks for watching this video don't forget to like and subscribe and i will see you in my next post so here i am using rose gold synthetic leather for our purse today but before we start i'm just going to quickly trace out the flap and the top of our purse this is just like an extra detailing so i'm using the same chipboard i don't want the purse to be too thick so i am avoiding any other thick stiffener so i'm just going to go on and trim this out trim all the edges out just going to make sure i get all the details right so this is what it's going to look like after you finish cutting it and you can always check um, the sizes to see if you got it exactly the same. So next I'm just going to go in with contact adhesive or Evo stick or contact cement, anything you call it, but this is the gum I'm using today. And I'm applying the same thing on my stiffener and on the material itself. For this type of gum to work, you have to use it on both surfaces then let it air out a bit so this is the one for the top and the flap piece i'm still going to wrap that one in synthetic material <clears throat> and you want to make sure you're smoothing out any air pockets or anything that would have gotten under you have to remove it so before i wrap i'm going to go and trim um the allowance out i'm leaving in um, I think it's about a centimeter extra and we're doing the same thing for the main piece I'm just going to go and lay it on our synthetic leather so because this is a big piece I like to work from the middle out so even if there's any bump it's easier to remove it that way so we're doing the same thing that we did to the other piece which is trim out any excess so you can leave uh, between one centimeter to 1.5 centimeter extra it's fine you're still going to sort of fold everything in so this is how you're going to be doing it if you have a bone folder you can use but i don't have mine in my home studio so i like to use my hands or any other thing i can get my hand on so this is actually how i do the tip first you pinch the middle and you sort of just keep dividing whatever um space you have so just keep pinching it in so i'm going to do this first part with my nail i'm going to zoom it in for you guys to see clearly this is me using my hand and i just sort of reached out for my piercing owl and i'm doing the same thing with my piercing owl so you divide it into two divide that one into four so this way you make sure that your folds are actually evenly arranged that's the whole essence of this technique so you can just keep pressing it until it's flat enough and even for something as soft as chipboard this would actually still work through so this is our main piece okay let's just trim off any excess before we move to the next thing that we're working on so this part is going to actually be the bottom part of the flap 
I don't know if I explained this before. That is why I just did it because I wanted something that looked really um, good and neat. I just didn't want to fold it. So it's usually easier to do it like this. You could just trace out your flap and um, okay, you can extend it to the um, top of the purse too. That's also fine. So we're still using the same contact adhesive unfolding technique here, which is putting the gum on your leather and on your stiffener. You have to put it on this is. If you don't do it, it's not going to come out well. So I'm just going to apply it. Don't forget to let your contact adhesive breathe. I because it's a tutorial, you don't get to see the waiting period, but you have to wait till it's not so sticky. I don't know, it's just common sense at this point. So I trimmed out any excess, but before I fold it in, I'm just going to go in and sew that fold. So here I'm using my cylinder arm industrial sewing machine. That is the same machine I use for this entire project. So I'm just going to sew this um, fold in and this is going to give us sort of like a rounded gusset so your work is no longer flat. After that, then I'm now going to start folding the um, synthetic leather on the stiffener itself. And don't forget, you can use any stiffener you want. I just used this because I wanted my bag to be sort of soft, I guess. I didn't want that very solid and rigid feel. So chipboard has the same um, feel with um, like cardboard or like um, cereal box or any recyclable small box. It, it has like a similar feel. So if you don't have chipboard or if you don't have access to chipboard, you can always use something like that. So I'm about done with folding in the edges of my um, side pieces. And don't forget, because of the shape, what you draw on the left is going to be mirrored on the right. So this is going to be the inner part of it. I'm not using any um, kind of lining today. I'm using the same material inside and outside. And that is why I used um, something that was kind of soft as my stiffener because I knew that doubling synthetic leather inside and outside is going to be quite a thrill. So first, um, I applied a little contact adhesive right on the line and that's going to be the top of our, our inner part. Then after folding it in, I'm now going to join it to the outer part. So we're just going to do it like this. And as usual, we are going to use our contact adhesive on both surfaces. This is really important. I can't stress this enough. So I'm going to apply it on the inner part and on the outer part of our side pieces here. I'm just going to rub as much as possible. So you see it's not too sticky here. And don't worry about the fact that your gum is going to be kind of dry. It's still going to gum. That is why you're putting on two surfaces. So this is how you're going to now just sort of lay it flat. And it's just going to follow the contours of your outer piece. So you want to do it like this. So when you are sewing the bottom, it can actually sew that part in too. But first we have to sew the top. Of our side pieces um, I'm doing the two sides anything I do for one side I'm doing exactly same for the second side so I don't really have to show everything so I'm um, just going to um, trim the threads off before going back to our other pieces so this one is going to be the inner part of the purse like I said before so I'm just going to trim is see the, the wrapping is always the same you have to wrap the stiffener first then you just sort of work with it so it means that if you're using them um, Ankara or cotton fabric or any sort of material I think even leather too you can actually use the same method so this is to give an idea of how the inside of our bag is going to look so the top part is exactly the same size but i put a little allowance for the lower part i always like to leave allowance when i can so i'm just going to mark those two lines out and that's going to be where i am going to sew the lining to the um upper part of our flap the inner part of our flap sorry so i'm just putting one line of gum here it's just to make it sticky so when i move it it doesn't shift or anything so that is not like a final thing i'm still going to sew that place so when I just lay it on top like this, I can now raise the piece and take it to the sewing machine for stitching. So pretty the same thing, you just um, sew. So this is what joins the lower part to the upper part. And this way, it also acts as a guide for when you want to attach your inner pocket. So that's why I also use this method. 
so after sewing i take it back to my um, table so i left like one inch um, space and then for the inner pocket i marked 5.5 centimeter and 20.5 centimeter don't mind me counting i just wanted to be very sure because um off camera what i did is i just got like a piece of um synthetic leather and i just sort of folded it into two and that's what i want to use as a pocket here and the dimension for this pocket was 15 by 10 centimeter so i didn't stitch the top of the pocket because it's just sort of folded on itself so this um size always works well for me because it can carry like my cards and like smaller items and anything you want to separate from the main pockets so as per usual we have to line our marked area with gum so that it doesn't shift when you do it's very important because if you don't um, do it like this your pocket could shift and then you will not have something that's going to look diagonal so off camera i already um stitch the pocket down i didn't have to shoot the same clip all over again so this one now is we want to start fixing the magnets so this is one way i like to do it i just sort of press it on it and lucky for us this um material press is easy so you get to see the mark it leaves from the bottom stud so i'm just going to put the first one here then fix the washer at the back this prevents it from ripping out then we clip it back down and we have to now trace the other side i like to do this method a lot if you're actually going to make the same bag over and over you can do this with your pattern so you just mark your lines out so we still have like our folds and everything so i'm just going to use that one to trace where the magnet is supposed to stay and i'm just going to press it down so you would see um, the mark it's going to leave behind so that's going to be where we'll fix our second magnet so after punching the holes fixing the magnet don't forget to put the washer because even in something like this you see how the chipper is very soft so this washer gives it extra reinforcement so now it's time to start closing the bag so i applied contact adhesive on the two pieces as usual so i'm just going to trace the upper part because that side is really important that has to be perfect so that when you sew it it doesn't um, look really messy so i'm just going to lay that side first then now sort of trace the thing down to the other part so the other side it's easier to just fold it in because it's a straight line but i couldn't do this for the flap so um, below the flap i'm just going to fold it in and because it's already gum inside so it's all it's sticky so just sew the thing straight like that easy peasy lemon squeezy so first i'm going to sew the flap i'm only stopping right where the bottom piece um starts and begins because that is actually where your gussets are going to already continue from so this trick this is my sewing machine oil trick i noticed that the needle was beginning to look very sticky and i'm like yeesh i don't think i was waiting long enough for my glue to dry so i'm just adding this to be safe because i don't want my thread to start cutting or messing up my work at this point so after doing the flap side then i'm going to switch it to the lower the other side that's just a straight line there so after sewing this i always like to come back and trim about um i think it's like half a centimeter off so this way you know that when you join your pieces you're not going to have any lining sticking out so i always do this method and it's always super neat so i'm now doing the same thing for the gussets that we we're working on earlier so you know that after this there's only one thing left to do and that is close the bag so the usual drill i like to clip my um i like to clip my pieces together some people use contact adhesive too some people use glue some people use anything but i like this technique because it's always easier to correct and i don't know it just sort of works for me and i'm already kind of used to it so that's fine by me so it was actually when i clipped this together that was actually when i started seeing that under the flap was a little high but it was too late to go back if I had noticed something like this when I was winding the patterns, I think what I would have done is maybe 
make the top a little longer or add a little extra so instead of having like four centimeters in the top i think i should have done like six also maybe to now sort of cover that um sticking the parts um, under the flap that was sort of sticking out so what do you guys think about this how would you correct this kind of error and uh, what do you think about this design generally put in the comment section thanks for watching this video if you've come this far you are the real og <laughs> thank you so much for um, supporting my channel don't forget to like and subscribe what do you think about this purse you can give it a rating on anything you feel and if there's any tutorial you want me to do in the future please let me know also i would love to hear from you guys you can leave your questions in comment sections and any other concerns that you have thanks for watching my video this is eris atelier i guess i'll see you in my next post